Welcome to Lead Code Python Coding. That is a working title. I'll think of something better in the future. But for now, what I'm going to do is go over some Lead Code problems, uh, but all encompassing a specific concept or topic. So here I'll be talking about stacks, stacks, stacks. So what is a stack? Well, I think the easiest way to conceptualize a stack is like a Pringles box. Uh, stack is a linear data structure where we append different objects in order, but whenever we want to delete or take a peek at what's at the very top, it's going to be a last in first out sort of structure. So essentially if we had this Pringle, Pringles box, um, metaphor, if we want to add an object, it would get to the very bottom here. So say that we added one, it get put down right here. Let's say that we put down another one, put down two, gets added here. But if we want to pop it off, then we take off the last one that we just added. So two would get popped off. And let's say we add another one. This one would be three. This will continue in this order. So essentially, like these data structures could be useful for certain, certain situations, like maybe the undo function, where it records the very last action that you did. And if you want to undo it, it's going to pop off that very last action here. And the neat thing about a stack is it popping off is going to be O of 1 time complexity. So simple enough, right? It's a pretty easy uh, data structure to conceptualize. But in lead code, essentially the basic pattern that you'll be seeing is it's something like you initialize a stack and for everything inside of the object, for something in objects, there's going to be some sort of condition. And there's obviously it's not going to ever be this simple, but there'll either be a while or if condition, and we'll probably st pop off something off the stack and usually add something to the stack here. Now I should add one thing usually is here we take like we do some sort of check with that very top item on our stack so it'd be something like stack negative one uh, and we compare we do something here with usually this object now this isn't always the case but i think it's a good kind of pattern to kind of think about there'll always be kind of a nested for loop but the good thing is with stacks, it's not going to be a n squared time complexity. It's usually going to be O of n time. Okay, so let's go over some problems. Uh, I'll try to keep it simple. Starting with the valid parentheses problem. Okay, so this is a very classic stack problem. Given a string s containing just the characters open close parentheses, open close squiggly bracket, open close bracket, determine if the input string is valid. So the input string is valid if open brackets are closed by the same type of brackets and it must be in order. So we can see open close, open close bracket, open close squiggly line, but also we have to keep in mind that we could have like, this would also still be a valid parentheses. Okay, so we can't just assume that it's always gonna be next to each other. Uh, so that's why a stack here comes in useful, okay? Now, remember that pattern, right? It's, we initialize a stack and we're going to have four parentheses and s there's going to be some condition here right and here what we'll do is we're going to check if p is in let's see if it's a close parenthesis or a close bracket or a close squiggly line we're going to make sure that the very top of our stack matches it and pop it off okay so uh, what i'll do is create a mapper here and this is going to be a dictionary with Let's see, each point to see, this makes it a little bit easier for us to code. And we're going to just make sure that these match up. So let's see this, this, close bracket, open brackets, close squiggly line, open squiggly line. So if P is in here, then we should make sure that there's a stack. Uh, if stack and stack the last item, if it equals C mapper P, then we will just pop off the stack here. 
Otherwise, we know that this is invalid, so we'll return a false. Else, we just append whatever this p onto our stack. And at the very end, if this parentheses was valid, we should have an empty stack. So this stack should be equal to an empty list. So it's a classic problem. Uh, hopefully this works. Let's make sure that works here. And there we go. So this, I think, is pretty easy to visualize. We're kind of adding to our stack here, right? And we're making sure that the closed parentheses matches up with whatever is on the very top of the stack. Okay, so a very classic one. This, uh, I think, pretty much everyone should know for an interview. So moving on, uh, how about a little bit more tricky one? This is simplified path. And this isn't really necessarily a stack problem, but uh, I think it's still pretty good. So given a string path, which is an absolute path to a file or directory in a Unix style file system, convert it to a simplified canonical path. So in Unix, a period refers to the current directory, a double period refers to a directory up, and any multiple slashes are treated as a single slash. So those are the three main things that we need to worry about. Uh, but really, it's like these periods, we don't really care about. We can just skip those because it's in the same directory. It's when it's we have a double period here that we're going to add our file directories on, and if we see a double period, we're going to pop it off the stack. So that's kind of where this stack thing comes in. Everything else is just string manipulation. So uh, let's see if I can get this quickly. First, what we'll do is we're going to split our path to string. We're going to make it into a list. And we will just do path.split. And we'll uh, split it up by these slashes. So next, we have our stack here, right? And we're going to say for, let's call it file in path. Now there's a couple conditions, but uh, I think the main one is that double period, right? So if file is equal to double period, we're gonna pop off whatever is on our stack. Okay, well, assuming there is a stack. So if stack, then stack dot pop off. Okay, otherwise if file equals a single period, that's nothing, right? We can just continue that. And otherwise, we will add, well, I should say if not file here as well. So if not file or file this period, we continue. Else, I think we just add to our stack here, file pen stack. Okay, so at the very end, we should have a list of the correct file path, and we're just going to return a string join, but we're going to have join it with a slash here. And one thing I think actually this says it has to start with a slash, so we'll just say slash plus. So let's see if it works. Okay, it looks like it's working, so let's submit it. And there we go. So this again, you can kind of see the four, everything in our in our file, <laughs> whatever in our list. We have some conditions, and we're either going to pop or we're going to append, right? So that's kind of that pattern. All right. So let's move on. All right. This one validate stack sequences. Given two integer arrays pushed and popped, each uh, with each with distinct values, return true if this could have been the result of a sequence of push and pop operations on an initially empty stack, okay? So uh, what the heck does this mean? Well, okay, we have, basically we're trying to simulate some sort of stack operation, right? Some stack sequence. We have everything that we've pushed, but we we don't know when we've actually popped off anything. But we could tell that pretty quickly. We can say like, look, for everything we push, we'll put this onto a stack here and we'll check to see, hey, everything on the very uh, beginning of popped, is that on the top of the stack? And if it is, then we can just pop it off the stack that we just entered. So here you can see we've added one, two, three, four. Now we pop off four, so that gets popped off. Then we add five, okay? And then we uh, pop off five here. And now we just pop off three, two, one. So at the very end, our stack should be empty. Uh, but here, if we added one, two, three, four, four, we can see that it actually wouldn't make sense because we can pop off four, three, but we can't pop off five. Right? Wait, let's see here. 
or I'm sorry, we can't pop off one before two. We can pop off five, but at the very top would be two, and we're trying to pop off one here, so that's invalid. Okay, so I think that's a that's actually something you could visualize. Uh, let's see, what we'll do is again initialize a stack, and for here we're gonna say for p in pushed. Uh, let's see, what's the condition here? Well, we gotta make sure that we have a stack while stack and while popped. And the thing at the very top of our stack, if it equals the very beginning of popped, then what are we going to do? We're gonna pop off our stack and we're gonna pop off our popped here. And I'm gonna cheat here and just pop off the very beginning of, of the list. You can do that. This is still O of one time. Uh, but if you want to avoid this, you could just reverse this popped list and do this same thing here. So at the very end, oh, got to append R. Actually, here I think we got to add in the beginning, right? So stack dot append p, do this, and we should at the very end have an empty stack as well as an empty popped. So popped should be empty as well. So let's make sure this works, and you can see that pattern again, right? Four, and then we have our while or whatever condition we pop and hopefully this works all right so last question okay so this one's a little bit more tough score of parentheses given a balanced parentheses uh string s so we know that this is already balanced return the score of the string now we have open and closed parentheses whenever we have one uh, that's going to have a score of one and we're going to add it up with the next closed parentheses unless it's enclosed if it's enclosed then we're actually going to multiply it by two and you can see here like that makes a difference right whether it's this whoops this is three while this is going to be what one two four right so how do we do this? Um, well, the tricky part with this one is rather than appending the parentheses into our stack, we're gonna um, keep track of the score here. And the reason for that is we actually need to remember if this was enclosed or not. And that's gonna require us to remember that previous variable. Um, you can actually do that by having a temporary variable, but it's much more intuitive to just put it onto the stack here. So what we'll do is we're going to have a stack and we're going to keep track of that score. In the beginning, it's just going to have zero, right? And we'll say for, let's see, for the P in S, so the parentheses. Now, if, uh, if it's a open parentheses, we're just going to append, let me think here, we're just going to append so one or zero, okay, if P is equal to open parentheses, then we're gonna append to our stack. And I believe it's zero, we just append zero. Now, otherwise it's a close, what do we do here? Well, this is where it's a little bit tricky. Um, what we're gonna do is pop off that previous score from before, so we'll take call this uh, previous and we'll say this will be stack dot uh, pop and we're going to take whatever's at the very top plus equal um, from what I remember we want to take the maximum between stack negative one it's going to be that previous one times this previous or one and usually this should be zero, but uh, could be that this would be, if it's enclosed, we're gonna start multiplying that number. And at the very end, I'm pretty sure you just return whatever's at the very top of the stack here. So let's make sure this works. Uh, I have no idea if that worked, let's see. Um, okay, so that didn't work. Uh, 
plus equals stack max times previous. Hmm. So let's take a look at what that stack looks like. Oh, what? Previous. So either we add one. How can there only be one here? Hmm. One as previous, usually it's a zero. So, previous is zero, then it doesn't. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. No. What am I doing? I think this is just times two. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh, let's try that again. Let's submit it. Okay. So apologies for that, that um, kind of a brain fart here. Yeah, I'm not gonna multiply it by what's on the top of the stack. You can take the previous number and uh, because we know that it's enclosed, we're gonna multiply it by two, right? And as long as it wasn't enclosed, it's gonna always be zero. So then we're just gonna add one here. All right, so, but again, you can see that same pattern here with four in the parentheses and with our conditions, they're gonna be an append or a, or a pop. But this one I think is a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily have to use um, the stack to keep track of that score. You can also put it into a variable if you like, but you have to have some booleans to check whether you know it was enclosed or not previously. So, all right. Uh, I think that's gonna conclude my video for today. And hopefully I'm just trying to switch things up, trying to see what works. And yeah, next time I'll maybe do more stack questions or do some variations like monotonic stack. Hopefully get into more difficult concepts like uh, dynamic programming and such. So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.